Hey there, Canonites. Welcome back for some more Canon fodder. While the main article itself doesn't hold much in the way of new and revealing insights, the universe entries Grimm has released this week more than make up for that. So, let's dive in. As I said, the main body of the article doesn't hold a whole lot that's interesting for lore lovers, but there's definitely a few things to talk about. First up we have Halo 5 Live, a 6 hour event that starts at 3pm Pacific Time on October 26th. If you live on the East Coast, this thing will end right as Halo 5 comes out. It looks to be quite the launch event, with developer interviews, looks at launch events across the world, and so much more. Such as Nathan Fillion. Oh, and that guy who writes some blog on Halo Waypoint. Jeff something or other. I, I don't know. Moving forward, we get a brief advert for Hunt the Truth, which somehow just keeps getting better with each episode, followed by something I'm very glad that Grimm brought up regarding Halo 5's campaign. Of the 15 levels, there are a few that provide a break from combat, allowing you to explore the worlds you're on and interact with characters you might otherwise be too busy to talk to. Sadly, I can't really comment too much on that without risking breaking the media coverage embargo. Next up, Grimm addresses a concern that many people have had with Halo 5, the presence of Storm Sunghili in the Swords of Sunghelios. Well, as Grimm explains it, the Storm rank, if that's the right word, has been in service a long time, serving a variety of capacities, much like the Rangers. As such, there are some that will naturally align themselves with Jewel, while others align themselves with other factions, such as the Swords. I mean, at this point, we've seen that Jewel's faction does have Sunghili that wear a variety of combat harnesses, so it makes sense for the same to be true of Thel's faction. And of course, the presence of the Storm Combat Harness in no way invalidates the bookended cutscene from Halo 2 Anniversary. That modified combat harness is just as canon as the one seen in Halo 5. As we bring it to a close, Grimm brings up a recent Waypoint article that, while focusing on the competitive rank, actually gives us a brief look at Halo 5's Gravity Hammer, and mentions that Dark Horse recently dropped a preview for Halo Escalation number 23. Links for both are in the description, and I would recommend checking out both. And with that, the article comes to a close, and we can now get into the universe entries, and I'm so excited to do so. This week we have the elite homeworld of Sanghelios, the westward temple of the sea, aka Sunion, and the swords of Sanghelios. Starting out with the elite homeworld, we get some details that have, up until now, only been hinted at, along with plenty of new stuff. Sanghelios orbits a star named Urs Fie Jori, often shortened to Urs, and is the fourth planet in the system. It has two moons, Kikost and Suban and is quite a bit larger than Earth, its gravitational pull being 1.375 g's. The planet was a key location during the War of Beginnings, the formal name for the conflict that led to the Writ of Union and the formation of the Covenant, and served as a primary outpost for the Covenant during the construction of High Charity. Following the downfall of the Covenant, the planet soon fell into a civil conflict as Sunghili tried to figure out what to do next. Many were in favor of Thelvadam, the Arbiter, taking lead of the Sunghili, but his push for peace with humanity was highly controversial and led to further conflict. By 2558, Sanghelios, once home to 8 billion Sanghili, was now bordering on 4 billion, many having fled the conflict and establishing new homes on the moons of Kikost and Suban. This also led to further warring over the newly available land that had been abandoned. The planet itself is mostly covered with water and features five main continents, Yermo, Tulvus, Kepar, Kivro, and Vardam. The majority of land on the interior of these continents are large deserts and as such, keeps and cities are largely located along the coasts. The coasts often feature steep mountains or rocky tombolo drifts that provide protection during the harrowing rainy seasons. Next up is Sunayan, a pre-covenant holy site built above a sacred forerunner artifact. Wink wink. Located near the continent of Kivro, the site also proved to be a perfect staging area, with quick access to Yermo and, if one wanted, Vadam Harbor and the Kolar Mountains where Vadam Keep resides. Julumdama's forces eventually gained control of the site, hoping to strike at the heart of Vadam and the Kolar Mountains where Vadam Keep resides. Julumdama's forces eventually gained control of this site, hoping to strike at the heart of Vadam and the Arbiter. When Thel heard of this, he quickly put together a counter-strike force. And last but not least is the Swords of Sanghelios. The original swords were a brotherhood of Chitons, formed to overthrow a tyrannical Arbiter who ruled the continent of Kivro long before the Sanghili took to space. The stories of this brotherhood, their honor, loyalty, and sacrifice resonated with the Sanghili. The swords would be formed again not long after the Writ of Union to strike down those dissenting against the Writ. In a sort of twofold irony, the latest formation is now led by an Arbiter and works to end the Covenant once and for all. Currently, the Swords of Sanghelios are led by an Arbiter and a Council of Kaidens. And that does it for today. A lot of awesome new info and plenty to look forward to now that we're just over a week from Halo 5's release. I'll have some video and some raw gameplay for you guys to enjoy this week, so look forward to that. Livestreams sadly are on hold until I can figure something out. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Keep shining. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.